Well, Iran opening a door a little bit, perhaps for diplomacy, even after the U.S. airstrike that took out the country's top general, Soleimani. Foreign Minister Shavad Zarif telling a major German weekly that Tehran is open to direct talks. But he says only if President Trump makes the first move, saying, quote, for us, it doesn't matter who was sitting in the White House. What matters is how they behave. The Trump administration can correct its past, lift the sanctions, and come back to the negotiating table. We're still at the negotiating table. They're the ones who left. Karen Skinner joins us, director at the Institute for Politics and Strategy at Carnegie Mellon and a former advisor to Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. Uh, Karen, what are the chances the U.S. drops sanctions against uh, Iran in order to sit down at the table with them? I can't imagine under President Trump that the chances are very um, high, Eric, but I think that was a fascinating interview um, in the German magazine with the foreign minister of Iran, Zarif. Um, he kind of showed his hand. Um, sanctions are the problem for them. The economic squeeze, not just from the U.S., under the maximum pressure campaign, but also the fact that the Europeans, um, the E3, as they're called, who have not exactly agreed with the U.S. approach, they, too, have found themselves in a, a standoff on economic relief for Iran. So everywhere it turns, um, it's finding it difficulty um, with its um, economic trading relationships with countries that matter um, for its survival. It, it so seems I think they're, they're, it's a cry for help, actually. Yeah. I mean, it seems that they're getting desperate, that, that the Trump administration policies are really working, uh, opposite than what's happened in the past. They are. And where Iran tends to be, um, I won't say strong, but where it's been consistent over the last 40 years, but in more recent years, is in, in trying to create a narrative that the United States is engaged in economic terrorism, that the United States is the problem in the region. It's becoming more difficult even for a politician like Zarif to make that case. You know, he's been on the scene in, a, um, in Iranian politics for 30 years, for the better part of the 40 years of the um, Islamic um, Republic. And he's finding it difficult to make the arguments in the region, because not just the maxim maximum pressure campaign, but also the maximum diplomacy campaign that the United States is undertaking. Yeah, you know, he went to San Francisco State. Uh, I mean, he's, he's a charmer. As a reporter, I had lunch with him a number of years ago at the uh, Iranian uh, residence here on Fifth Avenue. Uh, and, look, and he even tweeted at us, at Fox News, and at the president. Here's what uh, Zarif uh, tweeted out. Real Donald Trump is better advised to base his foreign policy comments and decisions on facts rather than Fox News headlines or his Farsi translator. So, Javad, I got a couple of questions for you. Will Iran stop being the number one state sponsor of terrorism in the world? Will Iran stop supporting terrorist groups like Hamas and Hezbollah and others? Will Iran stop its obscene carnage it's committing in Syria? Stop executing people who uh, support opposition groups. Stop killing your young protesters on the streets. Deny their grieving families' funerals. Don't launch attacks against your neighbors and U.S. allies. In one word, will Iran protect human rights, behave as a full respectful member of the international community? Karen, did I miss something? That's a lot, but that's the whole story. And that is why President Trump in 2018 pulled out of the Iran nuclear deal. When you list the reality of Iran as a human rights abuser, its geopolitical objectives that don't serve the Middle East and the broader um, world well, you understand that Iran is backed into a corner and its real, um, its real option is to come to the negotiating table with no preconditions. They've got to make the first move, not President Trump, as Mr. Zarif has asserted. There is the message to Javad Zarif and the Iranian leadership uh, in dealing with the way forward. Karen Skinner, uh, thank you for your insight today.